Okay, so I'm on burn number 11 with the barrel that I just showed you how to make. And as I said in the video, uh, I made some uh, changes or improvements to how this one has been done. And I'm really, uh, really happy with its performance. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, like not surprised that it performs better, but pleasantly surprised as to how much more efficient it actually is. So I'm going to do this quick video just to update, explain how it's more efficient and how I'm, how I'm using it slightly differently than the first one and, and slightly differently from what I actually explained to you in the first video. And I'd like to go over just a couple of the changes that I made and try my best to explain or um, my theory as to why these things have, uh, why the efficiency has improved so much. And so what I mean by efficiency is what compared to what I showed you as far as uh, loading between the two barrels, the, the uh, ignition wood, my legs are starting to burn. <laughs> The, I've, I've been able to reduce the amount of ignition wood by a, at least 30%, okay, which, which is awesome. And I've been able, at the same time, I've been able to increase the uh, total density of wood in the inner barrel. So there, there's, a, there's a big change in, in how this one is performing. The first one, I was getting uh, relatively clean burns and I'm going to talk a little bit about that also as to how can you tell without sophisticated uh, equipment whether you're getting a clean burn or not. But anyways, um, uh, I, talking about the density of the inner barrel, as I explained in the, in the video on how to make this, I, I said that you can, you can uh, change the ratio of hardwood to softwood in the inner barrel. In this particular case, I've got maybe, I've got enough uh, hardwood available to me right at this moment, and I'm putting about 40% in the inner barrel. And so what I did was to increase the density, another way to do it is just simply cut the pieces smaller and get them closer together, which is, which is what I've done. One little thing here before we get going, an, another safety issue, something you need to be careful of. now. If you're gonna go buy a barrel or uh, buy the two barrels at a place that recovers barrels and sells them, um, they, they, they've cleaned them out, okay? If you're picking up barrels that businesses have left out for people to, to take, here's a word of caution, okay? This idea that uh, there's all these laws and these, these government agencies that are keeping us safe, all right? Um, <laughs> I don't know if uh, if if you believe that uh, there's nothing I can do about it. I've seen too many things in my life where you you got to be careful, uh, and I I have had uh, I have had uh, a bad experience with one particular barrel, but a whole bunch of other barrels that I got also have stuff in there that, in its concentrated form, can uh, at least not permanently harm you but cause some serious problems but there was one barrel that i picked up and i i started reading the description and it, it didn't say it was hazardous it didn't say it didn't say much uh it had a lot of information that didn't tell me whether tell me much about what was in there and so i i took the chemical names and then i researched it on the internet and i found out that uh, this product in its concentrated form can cause serious uh, permanent respiratory system damage. So, <laughs> if if you can't uh, if you can't find a label to tell you what was on the barrel bef uh, before you pick it up, don't touch it. If you do find a label and it doesn't say the stuff's dangerous, but it's got it lists some of the chemical names on it, before you touch it, go on the internet, find out what those chemicals are try and protect yourself. Okay, so let's get on with the, uh, with the exciting stuff. Okay, so uh, let's get on with the, uh, with, uh, I'm, I'm gonna explain to you uh, what's different from the photos that I showed you 
in loading the ignition wood or the, the wood between the inner and outer barrel, uh, I've reduced the amount of wood that's on the top by quite a bit, especially in the center. Um, but what you still have to make sure is, is you have it like built up to the edge here because you need, you need the, the wood to burn long enough around the outsides to ignite the vertical wood. And um, what I've done around the barrel is I've just, uh, I've used less, I'm, I'm using a little bit less um, two by fours or you know the bigger pieces and using a few more single boards. In some cases, I'm leaving some spaces between it or just instead of doubling up boards, putting single boards in there. Um, it's it's functioning a little differently than the first one, but uh, because there's less wood on the top, <laughs> I find that I have to leave the top open a little bit longer so that the wood around the outside has enough time to burn and heat up the vertical pieces and, and get them burning well. Uh, this particular one, I, I I waited too long to close it down because I went inside and got distracted. When I came out, the lid was off um, and I put the lid back on and it, it was gassing at that moment, but the gassing wasn't enough to, to keep it going and it, and it cooled off and stopped gassing. So I had to relate this one. So the next thing I changed was the lid for the inner barrel and I didn't put any holes in it this time and it, it works really well. Um, what's happening is uh, just because the, it's it's letting out gases more or less all the way around the edge I'm getting much more even heating uh, or much more even fire once the gassing starts and it's it's heating more of the barrel basically compared to the first one the first one tended to have about two really hot spots that got really red hot and the rest was kind of cool. This one here has much smaller red hot spots, but they're spaced more evenly around uh, around the barrel. So that's that's making sure that that wood in the inner barrel is getting nicely heated. And um, I haven't had any uh, any uh, uncooked uh, charcoal yet that I that I've seen in the in the in the ten batches that I've already processed. So. That is, that is really great. Uh, the other thing too is, what I'm finding is, there's a lot less heat on the bottom of the barrel because what I imagine was happening before because the holes were on the bottom, there was actually fire between the two barrels. And it looks like this, this barrel might last a little bit longer because the, the heat is less concentrated and it's more evenly spread around. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, when uh, uh, the other thing that I did is uh, the holes at the bottom. So as I explained in the video one that I when I showed you how to make this, the uh, because I wasn't sure how much air was going to be needed uh, once the lid was closed. What I did is, is I cut four rectangular holes and then I out of metal and I, I just welded some screws in place to hold a little metal door that I could slide open and shut and when it was uh, burning cleanly I you know I, I excuse me I, I would I would adjust the doors once it was gassing to to to, to the amount of air it needed to have a clean burn um, again, what I found was, I, I think, because I only had four holes around the bottom, there was too much of an area that wasn't getting enough air. And so I, what I did is, as I showed you, I put eight holes and the area of the holes, the eight holes roughly equaled the area of the four holes that I had in before. But with this working differently, what I found was, uh, there wasn't enough air getting in to the stove and letting it draft uh, well. So what I've done is I've went and I've drilled four more holes an inch and an eighth in diameter equally spaced. So I've, I've, got, I've got a single hole and a double hole and a single hole and a double hole all the way around the barrel. And uh, how I decided that it needed more air was when 
the stove is full gassing, I was getting a surge on the flame. So the flame was puffing out slightly into like outside of the barrel at the bottom and then going back and it was surging like that. And what that tells you is that um, there's not enough air getting in there and there's a buildup of unburnt gases and it's like a mini explosion. So once I put the, the four extra holes in there, I haven't seen any any surging so that that works really well now uh, another thing that has uh, that has made a big improvement is as I explained to you I I didn't make this ring very well the first time and so what's happening now is the the lid when it's closed has a much better seal on it and uh, I think it helps it helps draft the the entire kiln uh, better so that uh, less air is getting in here and more of the more of the air has is forced to come in through the bottom creating a higher velocity of air which helps also uh, burn it make it burn cleaner um, but also I think um, just with my experience because I've been closing the lid at around the time that I used to close it in the first oven. And what I found was I had a couple of burns that actually slowed down, uh, like the ignition wood slowed down to the point where it wasn't uh, getting the gassing going. And um, I think the reason, the only thing that makes sense to me is that the, the lid before had so many air leaks that the, uh, that the, the 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 ignition wood was still getting enough air even though the draft hadn't started accelerating so what's happening now is basically all I'm doing is is closing the lid a little bit later uh, this is something you have to observe you can look in the holes as it's burning when when the majority of the wood that's sitting on top of the barrel when you look in when there's not much when there's nothing left there and you've got really good flames uh, you can still kind of see that the flames are just on the tips of the vertical wood. So you want to give it, you want to give it a little bit of time to make sure that those flames begin to descend down. Also, as I showed you on the on the first burn, that you could see the paint burning away uh, pretty early in the burn, and it went pretty low. Um, what has to happen is, and you can you can control this by either using a, a few uh, very thin pieces of wood in the vertical. That will that will burn down very quickly, or you have a bunch of little pieces around the the outer edge on on the on top of the barrel there, so that what happens is is once that small piece of wood begins to burn and gets uh, smaller in size, it can fall down between the cracks and become a source of ignition for for the gases. So that's that's important. Um, so one more thing that uh, I need to address, okay? Um, how do you, how do you know if this is burning clean? As I said in the in the first video, um, on a cold day, it's it's pretty simple. When you got a lot of white, which looks like white smoke coming out of the the chimney, but it doesn't get very far from the the chimney. What you've what you've got there is you've got mostly uh, water vapor, okay? Um, when when that white stuff begins to travel a little bit further then you might have some white smoke but what is the white smoke I can tell you <laughs> I can tell you the really the really polluting stuff everybody's co2 co2 is a problem there's no question about that um, why why I believe that it's because <laughs> I've I was I was thinking about this when I was a teenager, and back when uh, people were who knew what they were talking about were allowed to speak, uh, I heard uh, I heard a scientist talking about what what it is we're really doing in to the environment and why we should be thinking about it. Um, however, uh, CO two is a minor problem if you are into regenerative agriculture and you understand what we can do to ensure that it doesn't become a catastrophe as 
everyone wants to, or not everyone wants to believe, but as it's being talked about, okay? Um, the, the harmful stuff is particulates and, and the, the basically the unburnt gases in the form of uh, like creosote that you get that builds up in your, your chimney pipes that you need to, to clean out once in a while. Um, so aside from visually, and um, uh, I'm gonna tell you there's another way to, to know what's going on. And if you're, if you're experienced with wood stoves, like really experienced with wood stoves and wood burning stuff, then you probably kind of know this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna caution everybody. Okay, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what you can do, but you got to be very very careful with this method. Okay, um, one of the best ways to find out how clean this is is to inhale some of the stuff coming out of the chimney. Okay, um, I'm gonna caution you. The two cautions is don't be close to the outlet of the chimney when you do this. One, the gases can be very hot. Uh, I've got, I've got, uh, what is it? These are these are five foot pipes. So I got, I got 15 feet of pipe in here, plus a, a, a couple of elbows uh, or an elbow and a T and a vertical pipe. And let me just check. Okay. So it, this isn't on full gas yet because the, the outside isn't uh, fully red hot, but the, the gases that are coming out of this pipe, I'd say pretty close to almost 17 feet away from here is over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you took a whiff of that, you would, <laughs> it'd be like being in a fire or like being on fire. You would, you would damage tissue inside your nose, inside your throat, uh, inside your sinuses, your throat, and possibly your lungs. So you gotta be, you gotta stop and think, okay? Number two, do not take a deep breath, <laughs> all right? Uh, you don't need to take a deep breath because all your sensory equipment is, you know, pretty much in your nose and in your in your throat. So you only need to get a tiny bit in there to to get it, to to get a taste of what's going on. And if you've got really good combustion and you're still getting like white smoke when you're smelling it, okay, what do you smell? Okay, most of the time, uh, in most of the burns. The, the, the most, the thing that I detect most is humidity, water. All right, um, you, I'm a kind of person that if it, if I'm, if I'm downwind from where it's raining and you know, with, you know, it's raining within, you know, a, a, you know, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 miles, uh, I, I can detect the, the elevated humidity in the air and the, and the, the, the kind of, uh, smell that rainwater has it's kind of i don't know how to tell you i, I describe it as a as a sweet moist sweat smell so when you when this is working good that's that's what you should be smelling that's coming out of the pipe which means you've got really low particulates and you're getting really really clean combustion which ends up producing water and oxygen <laughs> okay if you take that whiff and it takes your breath away, then you've, you've probably got a much higher uh, concentration of CO2, which means poor combustion. If you take a whiff and you immediately sense uh, an irritation in your, your nose, your sinuses, and, and your throat, you've got particulates, you've got unburnt gases, you've got the stuff that makes the creosote, which is pretty toxic. So this <laughs> this is now burn number 18. I've done a few uh, while in the time of that I've been making this uh, little update video. Um, so it, it's uh, one of the things I want to add here quickly 
as in uh, I was talking about how the the modifications that I did on the, my second oven uh, increased its uh, performance and efficiency considerably and I, I was I was amazed I was very pleased um, but it's been bothering me <laughs> the, the whole time because on average I've noticed that the uh, this unit is gassing beginning to gas at least 15 minutes uh, sooner than the other one on average and I know that uh, that I explained the changes especially with the lid and you know one of the things too with the air intake at the bottom being uh, slightly off off the bottom of the barrel but uh, I had occasion to uh, to dig I was digging through some stuff I had outside and the the inner barrel from the first unit was just there so I, I just I just grabbed it and grabbed this one and compared and uh, the the first inner barrel uh, is definitely a heavier gauge of metal and uh, the the weight difference was uh, you know quite easily noticeable uh, uh, just by picking it up I, I didn't weigh it to see how much um, uh, more it weighed it didn't matter but so basically uh, you know uh, with with the uh, you know the thicker uh, metal is especially for the inner barrel the longer it's going to take to heat up and the slower it's going to release and transfer heat to the inside where the charcoal wood is that do you want to heat up so uh, that was a uh, again uh, an accidental improvement that I really wasn't aware of uh, until recently and so with the one thing I, I did I did notice though the the barrel with the thicker gauge uh, had slightly smaller dimensions at least height wise than the one I've used here so it's it's something to to uh, to keep in mind this this inner barrel seems to have about the same gauge of metal than the outer barrel has so just just keep that in mind um, I mean if you have no choice and you have to use whatever you can get your hands on fine but the thinner gauge barrel definitely uh, also made made a big difference in uh, in the performance which in turn uh, reduces the amount of ignition wood that you have to use around it so that that's a nice thing um, the next thing I want to say is uh, so th after 17 burns um, eventually you'll see that the the barrel especially at the bottom where it gets red hot uh, begins to buckle and distort as I talked about in the uh, in the video where I showed you how to make it and so I got to the point where uh, just before I reloaded this one I, I took a hammer and and gently and carefully tried to knock out some of the the dents that went inwards because if you're cutting your pieces of vertical wood to you know a certain length that you want them to get all the way to the bottom there uh, once it buckles to the inside it's it basically uh, makes it so you can't pass those pieces of wood um, down in into the bottom Thank you.